Non-revving, short for non-revenue travel, is a perk used by thousands of airline employees all around the world. It's also called flying space available, or SA, because space has to be available on the airplane for us to get a seat. But in all cases, as employees, we're not providing the airline very much revenue in exchange for a seat, hence the name non-revenue travel. This is a perk I've used hundreds of times over the past few years, flying on my own airline and dozens of other carriers cost-free, or sometimes for a huge discount, even in first or business class. Here's how it works. Today, I'm finally getting the chance to enjoy the back of my airplane, the 767-300 in Polaris business class. Now, I don't always get this lucky non-revving, but when you do, you just have to soak up every second. I paid $92 today for this seat. The full fare ticket in this same seat today was over $6,000. There are three basic types of non-rev travel, pass riders flying on their own airline, Z fares used for traveling on other airlines, and jump seating crew members. I'll cover them all. But first, I want to show you a map of where these perks have taken me. Excluding Antarctica, I've non-revved on hundreds of flights, touching every continent. I try pretty hard to find open business class seats on longer flights, and have had the chance to cross the oceans dozens of times while being able to lie flat and get comfortable rest. While I don't have an exact figure, based on a couple hundred flights, I'd estimate that flight privileges have given me at least $100,000 of travel value so far. Being an airline employee has made the world a lot smaller for me, putting otherwise unaffordable trips within reach. Flying standby on your own airline is generally the most common type of non-rev travel for a few reasons. It's usually the lowest cost while also putting you towards the top of the standby list, ahead of employees from other airlines. And you don't have to be flight crew like me to enjoy these perks. Airline employees from all over the airline share the ability to travel the world. And you don't have to do it alone. Your travel companions can be a partner, dependents, parents, or sometimes even a registered friend you get the opportunity to travel with them and share the experience, which I just think is awesome. Booking on United is really easy for us because it's right through the normal United app, which links to our Mileage Plus account and employee profile, so I can scroll through flights really easily, look at which routes have the most open seats, and go ahead and book as a standby passenger. Sometimes you have to get creative and find routes that you wouldn't normally pick to try to find open seats. To make non-rev travel work, you really should have a plan A, B, C, and even D, to try to get where you're going. Remember when I said non-rev travel isn't always easy? It's a game you kind of get used to over time and it does take creativity. Delays, cancellation, and bad weather make it very difficult to find open seats. A few years ago, I was trying to make it home for my brother's graduation. Direct flights were oversold across the board, and to get home in time, I flew four legs in one day, from Fargo to Chicago, to Syracuse, to Charlotte, and finally Richmond, Virginia. Now, I made it, but I seriously wish I'd bought a ticket. If you really need to get somewhere by a specific time, give yourself plenty of room or buy a ticket. Where you stack up on the standby list can make a really big difference when you're trying to travel because flights have been relatively full. At United, we prioritize seniority, so longer company seniority will put you towards the top of the list, and then other airlines you'll find prioritizing the standby list based on check-in time. There are pros and cons to both, but it's really important to understand the difference between the two. At United, our non-rev list is seniority-based, divided into various categories for mainline employees, retirees, express partners, travel companions, buddy passes, jump seating crew members, and employees from other airlines. On top of that, we get a limited number of vacation passes that boost our standby priority. And when a paying customer wants to fly standby on an earlier flight, they're all the way at the top of the list. It can get really confusing, and on a full flight, it changes by the minute. With so many moving parts, what you see a few days in advance just isn't accurate. So let's break down an example. Today I'm trying to travel on United Flight 845 from Chicago to Sao Paulo, Brazil on a 787-9 Dreamliner. There are 33 seats available with 35 standbys listed for the flight. 
There are 13 seats in Polaris Business Open, two seats in the Premium Plus Cabin Open, and 18 open in Economy. As you can see, the list is arranged in seniority order with vacation passes first, employees on regular passes next, and then other groups like companion travelers, parents, and express partner employees. I can see where I'd fall on the list either using a vacation pass or a personal pass. Some standbys will get lucky with business class on the 10 hour flight and others will be happy just to get on it all. We can also fly on dozens of other airlines all around the world for a huge discount. It's called a Z Fare, which stands for Zonal Employee Discount. Airlines work together to make agreements so that their employees can travel on each other, and the fares are usually based on things like mileage and fare class. Your travel companions and sometimes even a registered friend can travel with you, and it's a great tool to use when you're trying to fly somewhere that your airline doesn't service. As an example of a Z-Fare, today I'm flying from Chicago to Warsaw, Poland on Lot Polish Airlines in business class for a tiny fraction of the ticket price. I've never been to Poland and I'm so excited to get there. Flight crews have another type of non-rev travel and it's called jump seating. So for us as pilots, we can occupy the flight deck jump seats when there's no seats available in the cabin, and flight attendants can occupy spare flight attendant jump seats. That's something that can happen on our own airline or on our partner airlines that have jump seat agreements. It's at the discretion of the crew sitting in the jump seat, and it's entirely cost free. Thousands of flight crew use jump seating to get to and from work. Flying standby can range from free to a few hundred dollars. It depends on your airline, where you're flying, the class of travel, taxes at your departure and destination airport, or how much the Z fare is. You might also incur something called imputed income in your paycheck, which is basically the IRS taxing you a small amount for the value of the travel the airline is providing. If you travel a lot, imputed income can add a few hundred dollars of income to your yearly earnings. Then your tax rate is applied to that number. It's a line item that you'll be able to see on your paycheck. Usually this doesn't add up to an amount significant enough to make a big impact on how much you're paying in taxes or affect your decision to travel. Having the opportunity to fly nearly cost-free all around the world is something you'll only find by being an airline employee. It's one of my absolute favorite parts of this job and I hope that you take advantage of it too.